guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're gonna to be doing my hike-a-thon reading wrap-up. So just in case you missed it, I did a two-week read-a-thon all themed around fitness, nature, springtime, a bunch of different things. I will link up here the reading vlogs for the two weeks that I read. I read seven books that I really enjoyed and I wanted to talk about them here with you guys. So this will be part one of my April reading wrap-up and then part two will be coming out very soon and that will be the books that I read outside of hike -a before and after. First up, I DNF'd Wildflower by Karsten Knight. I was very excited to read this one. This, I was told, was about a volcano goddess and was set like in the California Redwoods, which sounds amazing because I live in California and I've never read about a volcano goddess and it's YA and the cover's beautiful. I was buddy reading this with my friend Marie and I really hated it. I hated it. I read 100 pages before I DNF'd it. It starts out with like a bunch of teenage girls fist fighting and like teeth being knocked out and like all this really crazy aggressive stuff which I thought okay well maybe this comes into play in the story but the way that they were talking to each other and everybody was so unlikable and then it just kept getting worse and I just realized it was kind of like the writing style didn't work for me. I really did not enjoy this and Marie was feeling the same way so we decided to DNF and I will probably unhaul this in the future unfortunately. So excited I've been meaning to get to this one forever. So this is set during the gold rush era so we've got this pioneer western theme which I was really excited about because I haven't read anything like that since like Little House on the Prairie and I really consider this like Little House on the Prairie for adults. <laughs> um, but our main character is actually a gold seer. I don't remember what they call her but she can sense gold in the earth and her family and her kind of have to keep this secret so that people don't like try to capture her and use her for her skill and she can't use it too obviously and then some things happen in her life and she kind of has to go on the run so we've got like a journey in here. I'm not entirely sure what the plot is for this series just yet. It definitely had more of just like a journey go with the flow kind of a vibe. Not as much magic as I was wanting and I didn't love it quite as much as I was wanting to. However, I still kind of keep thinking about this character and wondering how she's doing so I am excited to read the next book in the series but I wound up giving this one 3.5 stars. Next up I listened to Monument 14. Again, narrator will be right here. This one basically is we have like a Costco Walmart style situation. A bunch of kids wind up being stuck there during an apocalyptic event and they have to survive. Um, how they got there and why they wind up getting stuck was a little bit unrealistic but I'll allow it. So the kids were all different ages in here. This is a young adult book. I was thinking it was more middle grade but it's definitely young adult. There are younger kids in here that they kind of have to take care of as well. I was enjoying the concept, however it kind of didn't really go anywhere a long time. And then there were some weird things in here that I talked about in my reading vlogs that I just really did not enjoy and thought were kind of inappropriate honestly. Um, so this one again just didn't work for me sadly, another survival read that I wanted to love. Um, I did wind up giving this one three stars. The ending was decent. I don't think I'll continue with the series though. Then I read 10 by Gretchen McNeil which I recently picked up. This one is set at a house party on an island and basically a bunch of kids are going to this house party and they're all excited and then they kind of slowly start dying and they have to figure out who the murderer is so we have like a murder mystery type island survival read. I was wanting more of a true survival read like they were getting killed off by like the elements and things but this was more of like a murder mystery. Again I didn't love the way the characters like talked to each other. It was very dramatic and intense and like just not what I was looking for. A little bit too contemporary. Um, I did wind up enjoying the latter half of the book so I did still give it three stars an okay survival read. This one definitely has like a younger YA vibe about it as far as the way that they talk to each other but the subject matter in here is quite dark so definitely some trigger warnings for this one um, but yeah gave it three stars. Then I physically read Solstice by Lawrence Allison. I wound up randomly picking this up from Dollar Tree and I read that it was about an elite music festival held on an unknown island out of nowhere a lot of island books happening <laughs> and a bunch of like elite rich people get to go to it and they're expecting 
expecting this luxury vacation music festival and when they get there that's not exactly what's happening. Our main character is not elite or rich but her friend is so she gets to go with her. She has aspirations to be a journalist and when she gets there and finds out everything's kind of going crazy they kind of have to wind up surviving at this music festival. There was a twist in here I wasn't expecting. I really love this book and I gush about it in my <laughs> reading vlogs. It was so fun. It's just a really quick short read. One of my favorite survival reads now. Really fun. It had a twist in here that I was not expecting at all but really thoroughly enjoyed. Gave me all those good like islandy vibes. Highly recommend. This one's not super popular uh, but I personally loved it. I gave it five stars just because I enjoyed it the entire way through and it was so fun and it had some little twists and things. Obviously take that with a grain of salt but I really enjoyed it. Then on audiobook I listened to Bloom by Kenneth Opal. I super love Kenneth Opal's This Dark Endeavor I believe which is a Frankenstein retelling duology and I really enjoyed it so I wanted to check out more from him so I read Bloom which is about so basically these seeds fall from the rain and when they are planted they grow these intense grasses and plants that can't be killed and they wind up taking over and there's like poisonous pollen and the plants are eating things. They are following three teens in here that basically have to survive and figure out what's happening and help their parents. This one was different than I expected but I loved it. You're trying to figure out where the seeds are coming from and what's going on. <laughs> really great fast-paced read. The audio narrator in particular was very good. I'm very excited to read the next two in the series which is a really quick fast-paced read and I'm excited to read more from Kenneth because this was awesome. I wound up giving Bloom four stars. Then I also listened to Magic Steeped in Poison. Again, narrator right here. Narrator was not my favorite. She was not bad, but I found it easy to kind of zone out with her. And this book just didn't entirely work for me. Now, I don't know if that's because I was reading all these survivor reads that were really fast paced and very different and I was still kind of in that mood. So I wasn't really in the mood for a fantasy or if it was the narrator that was kind of making me zone out or what was happening. This one I only gave three stars, unfortunately, but it was well written and like the characters were enjoyable and there were lots of good things about it. It definitely wasn't a bad book. For some reason I just didn't fully connect with it. I really thought I would because it has a lot to do with tea and magic and cooking and all this ancient lore and it was very very cool. So I think this a lot of people are gonna really love this book and I may reread it in the future. Still would recommend. Her main character in this book her mom has been poisoned and she finds out that it was from her on accident like the tea she served her was poison and her sister got some of it too and she's trying to help heal her sister. Basically joins a contest in this like castle area and she has to do this like tea serving competition which is very cool um, to win a prize and then she can go home and help her family and then a bunch of crazy things happen. So definitely still check this one out. I just personally didn't like love it unfortunately. And then the last book I read physically was Cut Off by Adrian Finlay. I picked this one up because I just randomly found this one for searching for survival reads. So this one has a unique premise and I really enjoyed it. There are contestants in a virtual reality game. So these contestants are put in real life in like an island wilderness jungle and they have to survive. And at home the viewers get to purchase these like VR goggles and experience everything with them. They can feel and touch and smell everything and watch it like live stream all the time. And when the contestants are done they just hit a button and they decide to leave the island. The last person left wins I think like a million dollars or something and so there are all these different kids and you're getting all these backgrounds on the different kids. They're literally every other chapter or so there's an interview with the kid and kind of interviewing them to see if they're gonna work for the show and then a bunch of stuff kind of twists and they get cut off from basically the producers and the reality and they get actually stranded in the jungle and then there's a bunch of crazy stuff that happens. This book took twists and turns I did not see coming. It was definitely a wild fun standalone ride. I highly enjoyed it. I could see a lot of people not liking the twists and turns but I had a blast and I thought it was super unique and I really really loved it and I'll definitely be checking out more from Adrian Finlay. So those were all the books that I read for Hygathon. I really loved a lot of them. I found some new favorite reads. I had a great time. Be sure and go and check out those vlogs. You can kind of see my whole Hikeathon journey. Uh, let me know what you guys read, if you participated in Hikeathon, what your favorite read was. In less than a couple weeks I will be announcing Mermaid Marathon and all the details for that. That's the next readathon coming up. I'm super excited. It's the biggest readathon that I host with the most people joining and all that jazz. So be sure and follow me on Instagram at the Bright Side Girl as well for even more information and I will see you guys next time on the Bright Side. Thank you.